Crews are searching the Kentucky River today after possible human remains were found there. We've been out on the search scene all morning. We'll bring you the latest update just ahead on WKYT News at Noon. A woman is shot five times. Her longtime boyfriend in jail charged with her attempted murder in Laurel County. We have a system to the north of us really streaming in a lot of that mild air today. Today looks good, feels fantastic, but tomorrow we'll bring in some chances of rain. I'll show you the arrival time on that and how much we're going to be expecting coming up. This is WQYT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. Andrea Walker is in with me today. She's filling in for Barbara Bailey. And Barbara Bailey picked a good day didn't to be she? off, didn't she? <laughs> right. She's got a knack for that, I she hear. Can pick <laughs> <up>. <laughs> We're going to get right to the news here at midday. Let's head on. Well, now we are following an ongoing investigation by Lexington Police. This afternoon, crews are searching the Kentucky River after possible human remains were found in the vehicle in a water. The discovery was made over the weekend near the Valley View Ferry. Investigators say that vehicle has been in the river for months. WKYT's Hillary Thornton has been at that search site all morning long. She has the latest developments now for our top story at noon. Fayette County Coroner Gary Ginn says while there is still a lot to be done in this investigation, he does believe the remains that were found here behind me in the river are human. The bones were found over the weekend during a training exercise for the fire department. The coroner says about a year ago while police were searching this area of the river for a body, they found several vehicles that had been dumped in the water. They then waited for a day with good weather and water conditions to retrieve those vehicles. That day was this past Saturday, the fire department using it as a training exercise. When bringing up one of those vehicles, they say it's split in half. Investigators finding what they believe to be human bones in that half that was brought up. When they brought that vehicle up, uh, we're not sure if these bones that they found were associated with that particular vehicle uh, because they could have been drugged from the water. Uh, but that's what we're here today to try to find out bring the rest of that vehicle up and see if there's any other uh, human remains in it. Ginn says they believe the remains had been in the river for an extended period of time and that the dive teams are dealing with zero visibility in the water. When the divers are in the water, they've already told me last Saturday that it's zero, so it's going to be a feel thing to the bottom and where they've drugged this uh, vehicle from. Again, says their goal is to retrieve as much as possible. He says they are only scheduled to be out here today, but if they do find something they cannot get to in that time period, they will come back out another day. In Fayette County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Again, the coroner says that because the bones have been in the water for a while, there is a chance that they will not find any DNA, so they'll have to try to find other ways to identify the remains. A man is in the Laurel County Jail here at midday after deputies say he shot his girlfriend five times. Deputies say that they arrested Michael Johnson of Corbin just before 1 o'clock this morning off Lawn Chadwell Road, which is just north of Corbin. They say he and his girlfriend had been arguing before shots were fired and their child was at the home at the time. WKYT's Phil Pendleton has the latest details on the investigation. Well, the violence broke out late on Tuesday night. We are told that a man and a woman who were living inside this house here, along with their five year old child, had been arguing, having some kind of a fight when the man in the house pulled out a gun and then shot the woman five times. It happened in the back bedroom. The really sad situation here is that the little boy, the couple's little boy, apparently either was in the room, witnessed or heard this violence as it was taking place. Now, the victim of this case, about a 30-year-old woman, I am told the girlfriend of the suspect, was rushed to UK Hospital where she is being treated at this time. Uh, we found out uh, in the course of our investigation that there had been some arguing going on at the residence earlier in the day and that sometime last night late, that he had apparently backed her into a corner and fired his pistol as many as five times, striking her, causing serious injuries. Now, police are telling us the victim, despite being shot five times, was actually able to talk to deputies and investigators when they arrived before she was taken to the hospital. We're still trying to find out more about what exactly happened. We'll have much more later today, but for now, in Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. 
Neighbors say the shooting victim grew up right across the street from where the shooting happened, and her son is now being cared for by her parents. New at noon, Lexington police are investigating a report saying that more than $8,000 was stolen from the Tates Creek Elementary School PTA. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, records show that a suspect has been identified, but so far, no arrests have been made. A Louisville detective is accused of soliciting a prostitute. The department says Detective Dustin Hinkey is charged with solicitation of prostitution and first degree official misconduct. The charges stem from a public integrity unit investigation into allegations that Hinkey solicited prostitutes multiple times. Police say he has been placed on administrative leave. Hinkey has been with the department in Louisville since at least 2008. We now know the name of the woman who was involved in a standoff with. With Lexington police last night. Police say Robin Holbert is facing several charges, including fleeing and evading police and wanton endangerment. She is scheduled to be in court later this afternoon. WKYT's Mike Byer has more on her arrest. It was a scary situation last night, but fortunately, police were able to end the standoff with Holbert without anyone getting hurt. Now, she was arrested as a result and will be arraigned this afternoon here at Fayette County District Court. It all started around 7.30 last night when police say they spotted a stolen car and made a traffic stop. They say Holbert pulled into an apartment complex off her sales road, but she eventually got out of the car and tried to run away. Police say they tasered her twice, but she wouldn't stop. According to her arrest citation, she then pulled out a gun and pointed it in the air and then at herself, causing officers to use extreme caution. Police were eventually able to corner her in an area near Versailles Road and Delmont Drive. This is when the standoff began. Police say Holbert was standing on the porch of a vacant home during the standoff, a standoff that lasted for nearly two hours until a police negotiator was able to get her to drop the weapon, which police later discovered was a BB gun. The whole ordeal came to an end just after 9 o'clock when she was arrested. Holbert faces a long list of charges, including theft of a motor vehicle registration plate, wanton endangerment, and fleeing or evading police. Now she'll answer to those charges when she meets face to face with a judge in less than an hour here at District Court. In Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you. And Holbert is also charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon as police found a gun inside a backpack that was in the back seat of the car. A third person has been indicted in connection with a home invasion and shooting in Lexington. Police have issued an arrest warrant for Joseph Fain. He's facing a robbery charge. Last week, police say people forced their way into a home on Red Mile Road. That's when police say a 19 year old suspect and a 22 year old who were trying to protect a friend were both shot. Police say charges are pending against the suspect. They say another suspect, Demetrion Boaz, has turned himself in. Election of Business has some repairs to make after an early morning break in. Police say someone broke through a door at Jalapenos on New Circle Road. They say rolls of change were stolen and maybe some liquor. Well, a cold front is headed this way, but it looks like it's going to sweep on through, mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry. It's still looking good for the weekend or trick or treating weather. There you, you go. Know? WKYT meteorologist Mike Harris is live in our first alert weather center with an early look at your forecast. You look outside and you see bright blue skies. What you cannot see is a warm front. This this warm air streaming northbound. You can feel it though. I just looked at actually the the update out of Bluegrass Airport and surrounding airports. And those surrounding airports showed the 50s just an hour or two ago. And now we've jumped 10 degrees. I mean, that's all that warm air streaming northbound. You can see the difference. 71 Monticello, 53 in Covington, and sitting there in the mid 50s there in northern Kentucky. So that just shows you that the warm air is on its way. Don't, hey, don't put your guard down, northern Kentucky. You will still be able to wear your shorts later on this afternoon because we will start to see that warm air actually get past the river here in the next few hours. It's just an extremely nice day in store the rest of the day. The focus of the forecast is not so much about today. It's about tomorrow. Here comes a weak cold front that will give us a rain chance. And looking towards your weekend for Halloween and off towards your Monday, yeah, you're talking about really warm conditions for this time of year. I'm going to show you that coming up in a few minutes. All right, we'll get all those details in just a bit. Now to national news. Donald Trump is taking a short break from the campaign trail to tend to a little business. Opening up a big hotel mm -hmm. today while Hillary Clinton is celebrating her 69th birthday in Florida. Craig Boswell has the latest from the campaign trail. Donald Trump is opening his brand new luxury hotel here in Washington, D.C. The morning ceremony at Trump International Hotel also provided a stage for some protesters. It's up to the Trump organization who gets to stand on this public plaza. 
Trump's short break from the campaign trail comes as early voting is underway in many states. There are 13 days left. Most Americans are going to cast their votes on election day. And we know we're going to win this election because enthusiasm, momentum. Trump's new hotel is less than a mile from the White House, but the route from here to the Oval Office could go through Florida. The path would be much harder without Florida, and that's why you're going to see him. But we're going to win Florida, so it's not even part of the calculation. The latest poll in Florida shows Trump edging ahead of Clinton, but the two-point lead is within the survey's margin of error. Hillary Clinton has two stops in Florida today where she's urging supporters to take advantage of early voting. It's going to be a close election. Pay no attention to the polls. Don't get, don't get complacent because we've got to turn people out. Clinton's staff surprised her with a cake to celebrate her 69th birthday. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Washington. And Clinton got an early birthday gift last night from Adele, the British singer who is not a citizen and can't vote, urged Florida voters to support Clinton. Clinton happened to be attending the concert when Adele gave her the endorsement. The case of a former University of Cincinnati police officer accused of murdering an unarmed black man during a traffic stop has gone to trial. What's expected in court today? Ahead on WKYT News at noon, Kentucky's number one midday news. Hey, welcome back into WKYT News at Noon. The trial continues today for a former University of Cincinnati police officer who's accused of murdering an unarmed black man during a traffic stop. Ray Tenzing is charged with murder and voluntary manslaughter in the shooting of 43 year old Sam DuBose. And today, a judge is expected to hear arguments over efforts to use DuBose's former medical and conviction efforts. Defense attorneys say that uh, Tenzing feared for his life and the record of DuBose's conviction which are mostly traffic violations and marijuana-related offenses, as well as his medical records, could be important to jurors' understanding. Prosecutors say the records are clearly irrelevant. A Kentucky high school student is accused of trying to attack his principal. Not County deputies say they found 19-year-old Brendan Neese passed out in a chair. When they searched him, police found prescription pills. That's when deputies say Neese attacked the principal. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain will have more on that story coming up at 12:30. And state officials are wanting to remind Kentuckians this afternoon that seasonal restrictions on outdoor burning are in effect right now. Fall forest fire season started back on October 1st, and it goes until December 15th. It is illegal for any person to burn between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And the Kentucky Division of Forestry says because of dry conditions that are ongoing right now, they're asking people to not do any outdoor burning. Well, still plenty more news coming up on WKYT as our new news hour continues. Today, the Valley View Ferry will be closed as crews search the river where possible human remains were found. We'll have an update on their search coming up. And if you're heading out to Keeneland today, it is perfect weather for you. Tomorrow, maybe a little bit rainy. I'm going to show you that in your forecast, the timing on that rain. Coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. In northern Kentucky, we are in the mid 50s. Southern Kentucky, we're actually in the 70s. So you obviously see that warm air is racing northbound. It'll get to us here shortly, especially northern Kentucky. You guys in Maysville, still sitting in the mid 50s. That goes for Covington, work your way into Corinth, maybe even sitting there in Cynthiana. You're kind of on that verge right there of starting to feel that warmer air. Uh, and everybody else down south, boy, we're really, really feeling it. And it is nice. 66 degrees right now in London, 71. In Monticello. So here's the setup. You got the big warm front just to the north of us. Obviously, that's racing northbound. Here comes the warmer air to the south of that into our region to set up a little bit of moisture for this next system to roll on through. Once this front pushes on through, it's going to be late tonight off into the early tomorrow morning when we start to see a few showers work their way in. Just know this it's not widespread rain and it's not heavy rain. You're not going to get much out of this, maybe a tenth of an inch or less for most. So, yeah, you can have some isolated spots. A quarter of an inch, but a quarter of an inch, it's not going to do much for you. But at least it's some rain, I guess. Sliding on through tomorrow, that's when that weak cold front kind of moves on through. So just a few showers, no real thunderstorm activity expected, but we're looking pretty good right now. So here comes the front moving through. Once that happens on Thursday, you get some showers starting off in the west. I would say anywhere from 5 to 8 a.m. So more than likely along the lines of trying to get the kids outside uh, to head off to the bus stop. You heading out to work. Rush hour, yeah, it's possible, especially the western zones, to have a couple of showers here and there. Very 
light, very hit and miss. Most are going to be dry tomorrow, but we just can't rule out a few showers. Now, once it goes through the day, back behind that's very chilly air. So, in the central and northern zones, I'd say you guys at the end of the afternoon, 4, 5, 6 p.m., will actually be in the upper 50s, lower 60s. So, we'll actually finish off colder than what we started off with. Now, down south, you guys will actually have a really nice day in terms of temperatures. You'll stay in the 60s and even some 70s all day long because that front doesn't push through till the evening and nighttime hours. Average temperatures there on Friday were actually in the mid 60s. Pretty windy afternoon, so a pretty nice day in storm Friday for Keeneland. Off towards your weekend, we got some big events going on. Uh, don't forget, you have a big event that's the Thriller and Halloween, Halloween Parade going on in downtown Lexington. Uh, it's going to be downtown. Now, you have events and activities going on throughout the day. Look how nice that day is. 75 degrees. The actual parade kicks off at 8 p.m. Perfect weather for it. The thriller goes on at 8.30, so off into the evening, man. You're talking about still some really nice conditions. So the breakdown of it is this. Nice today. Tomorrow you get those showers, and then that, those temperatures start to drop throughout your afternoon. Friday, really nice. Friday night football. The weekend looks great. Halloween looks fantastic. It's 73 degrees, guys. It's not going to feel like Halloween, but at least it's extremely nice. Heading in towards your afternoon and off into the evening hours, 6 to 8 p.m. is when a lot of us will be going trick or treating. Yeah. Perfect weather. Yeah, perfect. Start to cool That'd off nice. a little bit. It'll yeah. be nice. All right, Micah, thank you for coming right back. The cats are set up for a big opportunity. And what a night in Cleveland. Dave Baker has sports coming up next. And as we head to break this afternoon, let's check stocks. And it's a mixed situation, but the Dow is up about 47. First, it was a must win, then last week, a win that would be great to get. And now, this week, as you look at it, it's a win the Cats ought to get as they head to Missouri. Tigers only two wins over Eastern Michigan and Delaware State. They've lost three in a row, but despite that, Mizzou will still play a style that will test the Cats' ability to stay the course. You know, the challenge there is they play absolutely, extremely fast. And uh, so they played 112 offensive snaps last week. Yeah. 112. So that's that's two games. So uh, we need to, depth is an issue. We can't let them have 112 plays, but depth is an issue, and uh, you have to play with with an edge about you, and an attitude about you, and, and you have to strain on 112 plays. 112 plays and about 50 points. Cats and the Tigers from Columbia kickoff is set for noon on the SEC Network. It's across the street. They also opened up the season and gave out the championship rings for the Cavs. Tonight on the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel, Rex Chapman is making the rounds, talking about his new role with us on the UK radio network. Delighted to have him. That's at 6 on 630 WLAP. And in just mere moments, the King Rex Chapman himself will be here. That's coming up in a bit. But for now, guys, that's a look at sports on this Wednesday. All right. That's going to be fun. Look forward to seeing Rex here in just a little bit, and we hope you'll stay here. That's right. There's more to come in our next half hour of WKYT News at Noon. A Kentucky high school student is accused of trying to attack his principal. That story coming up. Plus... The Valley View Ferry is closed for the rest of the day as dive teams search an area of the river where what the coroner believes to be human remains were found over the weekend. And tonight's Powerball jackpot is $164 million. Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $35 million.